I've talked about for a couple of years now how the Tennessee Titans, more than any team in the National Football League, lacked an identity, lacked star power, and how badly they needed both in great abundance. It was fascinating to me as I was watching the three days of NFL draft coverage on ESPN and NFL Network, how often I heard that kind of uh, catchphrase coming up talking about that they needed an identity, that they needed a star power, that they needed something, some type of life for that franchise. And I'm like, well, you're welcome for giving you the talking point. But it's true. The Tennessee Titans need star power. They need something. They need some life into their organization. They need that pillar, that bedrock, that they can build everything else that they do as an organization around. And it's fascinating to me with the 2015 NFL Draft. I can never remember a time in my life anyways that there's been more talk, more rumors, more discussion about a team and their draft pick and what was ultimately going to happen with it and what Tennessee faced with that second overall selection. You know, it far outweighs the talk of when the Rams had that second pick in 2012. It far surpasses that. You know, even going back to 98, maybe you get to Manning and Leaf 1 and 2, but there is probably always a firm understanding that Manning was ultimately going to go number 1 and Leaf would go number 2 to somebody. So I don't know how much debate there was. There was a great quarterback debate that year, believe it or not, but I don't really think it was that great in terms of who was going to get drafted, whereas more so um, who was going to be the better long-term player in the NFL. But we get to here, and it's somewhat similar in that way. Most people assumed that Jameis Winston was going to go number one to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and that somebody was going to take Marcus Mariota number two. It was just a question of who that team was ultimately going to be. And we got our answer on Thursday night on round one of the NFL draft when the Tennessee Titans stepped up to the plate and they took the kid from Oregon, Marcus Mariota, and they did the right thing. Look, I understand that they were getting all types of offers, I'm sure, from all types of teams involving all types of picks and probably players, too, from this draft and future drafts, what have you. But at some point in time, it's great to accumulate a bunch of draft pick currency and it's great to play fantasy GM and do all of this. But at some point in time, you've got to have something and you've got to have that quarterback. And when you look at the St. Louis Rams as a perfect example of this, they peeled back out of that second overall pick in 2012. And yes, they got themselves a great haul in terms of draft picks. But three years later, where do they sit? They're a 6-10 mediocre football team that has fooled people into believing they have high expectations again, and they're still searching for a quarterback. You know, did the Tennessee Titans want to become that? Did they want to become a team that had these pieces and those pieces, but they didn't have the piece that ultimately brought it together, the rudder for the ship, the captain for the ship in that quarterback? Well, the Tennessee Titans did the difficult thing. And sometimes the most difficult thing of all is to do nothing and stay the course. And sometimes the toughest thing to do is not make a move at all. And that's why the Tennessee Titans did so well in this draft above everything else. It's because they found their guy. And they said, we'll explore things, but you're going to have to step up to our price. And we're going to price you so out of the realm of possibilities that you're going to have it well known that Marcus Mariota is going to be our guy. And the Tennessee Titans stepped up to the plate and took him number two overall. And then they did what I always like to see when a team takes a young quarterback high. They built around him. They got a big potential freak weapon outside in Doriel Green Beckham in round two. And what I really like about that was that not only did the Tennessee Titans get this guy with first round talent, they were able to peel back from number 33 to number 40 and still get him and pick up an additional mid-round pick along the way. Those are the good type of moves that good types of organizations do that the Tennessee Titans have far too often failed to do. And in this case, I think they got it right. And then following it up with Jeremiah Potosi in the third round, you had a need at right tackle. And you had a, a mixing of need and potential value on the board. And you get a guy like Potosi who might end up sticking at guard. He could end up being a big mauling right tackle. That's a bedrock for their offensive line with Taylor Lou on his bookend tackles for the next 8 to 10 years. And then you even look at the rest of the draft. You know, For the most part, it was dedicated and devoted solely to the offensive side of the ball. 
You take a fullback in the fourth round, I guess, in Justin Fowler, but then you follow that up with David Cobb, a guy who could push Bishop, Bishop Sankey for carries as a rookie. Uh, then you take Andy Gallick in the seventh, sixth round, excuse me, a center from Boston College who I happen to think was worth a mid-round pick, maybe around round four, a guy who could someday develop into a starter for you. Then you look at the seventh round, a guy like Trey McBride out of William & Mary, who I thought was a third to fourth round guy, and being able to get him in the seventh round was an absolute steal. You get your young quarterback, and then you find pieces to help him, to support him, to build with, around him. That's good drafting, and that's what championship teams ultimately do. Now, I'm not here to sit there and say that the Tennessee Titans will be a championship team anytime soon. They've got a long, long way to go. But at some point in time, you've got to take that first step, and you've got to lay that foundation. And if anything else, that's what the Tennessee Titans did in this 2015 NFL draft. In terms of their best pick, to me, it's clearly Marcus Mariota. That's the guy. Because that's ultimately what this draft will be graded off of, is them not trading down, but them staying put at number two and taking Mariota. And if he becomes that franchise guy, then the Titans front office, Rustin Webster and their head coach, Ken Wisenhunt, will be fully vindicated for that decision. Because it won't matter if you accumulated five or six first round picks. You got your franchise guy. And when you have that franchise quarterback, you have a chance in the NFL. You're either a team with one or you're a team without one. And since Steve McNair, the Tennessee Titans, frankly, haven't had one, and that's why they haven't been much as an organization. But it was more than just Mark Mariota for this draft as to why this was a really good draft for the Titans and why I view him as one of the big uh, winners. They got some real potential steals. I look at Doriel Green Beckham, a guy that if he's clean off the field, you're talking about a guy that potentially goes in the top ten of this year's draft. I mean, that's the type of talent and upside and potential that he has. He could be a huge bust. Uh, but, man, he could be a big-time steal. And you're talking about pairing him potentially with Kendall Wright and Justin Hunter. Um, you're talking about a nice, young, athletic, impressive receiving core for a young quarterback like Marcus Mariota to step into. And you look at a guy like David Cobb and a guy like Andy Gallick and a guy like Trey McBride. These are all guys that could end up being day three steals. This is a really solid draft class pretty much throughout, except for what they did in the fourth round. I didn't really like the pick of Blackson in the fourth round because I don't even think he was the best defensive tackle at Auburn. I thought that would have been Gabe Wright. And then I really don't understand taking a fullback in round four. I really don't understand that. If you were going to sit there and take some type of back in the fourth round, then maybe you should have just taken a running back. Fullback is such a devalued position, and I understand that maybe they want to establish a more physical identity in the running game, and they think a guy like Fowler could help in that, maybe be a little bit of a pass catcher out of the backfield as well, line him up in some different places. I get that. But again, I do kind of question the philosophy of taking a guy like this in the spot that you did, because those fourth-round picks are incredibly valuable. So why spend them on a basically obsolete position? I don't really understand that. But overall, I thought this was a really good draft for the Tennessee Titans. I like the philosophy in general. Sometimes the best moves are the ones that aren't made. And in this case, the best move the Tennessee Titans could have made was to not trade out of that number two overall pick, was to stay put and take Marcus Mariota. And that's exactly what they did. Then they set about completing their draft process over the next two days by doing a lot of the good things that good teams should do when they're trying to build their organization up right. And that was draft pieces that could help Marcus Mariota, especially the Doriel Green Beckhams and the Patassis and the David Cobbs and the Fowlers and the Galax and McBride. They devoted the lion's share of the resources in this draft to the offensive side of the ball, which is exactly what they should have done. And when I look at day three and some of the potential values that they got in terms of Cobb and Gallic and McBride on the offensive side of the ball. That's what really set this Tennessee Titans draft apart from me in a lot of ways. I thought this was a really well done for the most part and well executed draft. Yes, I thought there maybe were some hiccups in the fourth round, but these are guys that could still contribute as well. So really good glass for the Titans. One of the real winners of this 2015 NFL draft, and that's why I gave him a grade of an A-. minus. Now look, if Mariota doesn't pan out, then this draft doesn't look so good in three years. But if he does pan out, man, it's going to be A-plus all the way. And if Mariota pans out, and that's probably in part because several of these other picks are going to pan out as well. The Tennessee Titans shouldn't get their Super Bowl tickets ready. But in terms of looking to begin the process of changing your organization and rebuilding, this was a job very well done for Rustin Webster and that entire Tennessee Titans front office.